Hey, this is Glendon. I want you to do something real quick. Go ahead, get a copy of my free audiobook, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. It'll change your life. Trust me on that. You know, I get up early and I typically ruminate over the things that I'm going to do for the day or things that happened last week. This morning, I had the strangest thought. I was in bed. I was checking emails on my phone. And I had this thought to do something, to go check out the stats of a website. It was just like, just do it. Just out of nowhere. It just came out of nowhere. So I did it. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I was really shocked that this channel, this YouTube channel, is doing better than that site. And it's not like head and shoulders better. It's it's um it's not marginally, it's substantially better in some categories because the breakdown for December was sixty thousand visitors and the breakdown for me was seventy four thousand. So uh, you know fourteen points that's a that's a, that's significant. That's significant. In some fields that's the difference between profit and loss. And I was sitting there, and I was just thinking. Because some shit went down with that a few years ago. Some massive shit. Uh, the, some of you uh, long-time viewers know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to get into it because... <coughs> excuse me. You know, there was an agreement in place that if certain things were met, then I wouldn't uh, go into detail about the incident again. And I'm going to keep that. But it was just amazing what consistency will do for you, uh, showing up will do for you, and never giving up. Because, you know, this is a one-man shop, and that is a networked entity. There's partners. There's all kinds of stuff going on. And I know from business, well, the more people you have sitting at the table, the smaller your share of the pie. And you know, I was just sitting there like blown away when I crunched the numbers, when I looked at stuff, when I did a little research. You have to understand. And this this is what I mean about that we're living in some very, very exciting times. Extremely exciting times. That the little guy can win big. You don't need an army. You don't need a company with a thousand employees or a hundred thousand employees. You don't need that anymore. You don't need any of that. You can do so much as an individual with the right tools, with the right information, with the right mindset that wasn't possible five years ago wasn't possible 10 years ago clearly wasn't possible 20 years ago that is the beauty of living in a disruptive economy the things that you can do the things that you can um, facilitate the things that you can just build from nothing because July 17th 2009 that's when all this started I remember they distinctly. I was watching Sir Ken Robinson's video about creativity. I came away from that video. It's a TED talk. Um, how uh, education kills creativity. Sir Ken Robinson, Google it. It's the I think one of the I think it's the most watched TED talk ever. And I was moved to the point of action. I wrote a book. Well, I started writing that book that day. Sketched out the outline and immediately went to work and that's another thing about being in this disruptive economy if you take action truly take action and really really utilize the tools of the internet the tools of these groups I mean, I mean the information out here is just awesome you can become a person that's making 50 to $100,000 in a matter of 6 to 18 months watching YouTube 
for free and utilizing information and taking action. You could do that. Anybody that is capable of reading, watching you, anyone, girl, boy, dog, cat, whatever. If Fudo the cat can talk, and like, oh, that's English, you can make it happen. That's the times we live in. And, and it's really disheartening when I see all of these people on YouTube or in these groups talking, about, I'm not making any money. I'm not making any money. Uh, the, the thing is, you're not paying attention to what's going on. If you have a voracious work ethic and you can stay on a project for a year, you will be amazed at what you can accomplish today. Just those two things, work ethic and focus, if you can do that. Because I don't know why I got that message this morning to check because it was just random. It was just, I'm up and it's like, go check. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go check. And I saw it and I started giggling my ass off because there's some backstory there I can't really get too deep into. But one of the instigators made some terse comments about keywords and I'm laughing my ass off now because the shit's funny. The shit is incredibly funny now. Because a lot of people that come to this channel that love the storage auction stories, and they're coming back. I'm going to do that. They were a little upset when I pivoted, because I've pivoted five times. Because I am a disruptive hustler. I look at stuff. Sometimes the pivots, they weren't good, but, you know, I'm not afraid to fail. I've gotten over that. Don't be afraid to fail. Do not be if you, failure is a learning experience, it means you're going to get knowledge you did not have before. So I've pivoted and some people were like, I don't like that. I don't like that. And I want this and I want this. I made a decision on July 17th that pissed a lot of people off. People talked about me, said crazy stuff about me. And I'm looking at that decision that was made four years and roughly eight months ago. And it's looking pretty damn good. It's looking um, prescient because that set the stage for other things to happen that just kind of blew my mind. Because there's another event that's getting ready to happen, probably February, something I'm going to do that I've been thinking about. And if you can't get to what's happening here in 2014, what happened in 2013, what happened in 2012, without what happened in 2009. And there are many people that are trying to leapfrog over the rough, rugged, and lean section of their success. There's going to be a period because I, I had a consult with someone that was just like, in the beginning, you're not going to make any money. And uh, someone that follow, I showed her some you know, screenshots of what he went through and how the first year just wasn't really where you wanted to be. It just wasn't. But without that first year, you can't get to year two. You can't get to. And I, I, I can I could tell certain people when they come to the Hustler Mindset Project. I know what they're looking for based on the questions, and it's that that quick hit. It's just I want to tap, tap real quick, make some money, and be out. And the Hustler Mindset Project isn't for everyone because what I'm trying to teach you to do is to build a legacy. I'm trying to teach you to build something enduring. And things that are enduring and become legacy aren't usually built very quickly. And that's the thing. And, you know, I let go. It's like, you know what? I'm going to create this course because it worked for me. What I'm giving you in the Hustler Mindset Project is what worked for me. I'm not giving you. And it's a lot of mental work. It's a lot of mental work. And a lot of people want cookie cutter solutions that, hey, if I buy product A and put on platform B, I'll get a yield of C. And that's all well and good. And there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of uh, really good blogs. A lot of Facebook groups that will give you that information. But what I'm trying to give you is the recipe for freedom. 
that is priceless. And many people don't understand because I watch uh, Spreecast and I watch things. And I, there are people who are, who are really, really successful. They're really, really successful. They're doing quite well with what the, the endeavors that they have. And I also see something else that they don't see is coming. They're creating traps for themselves. They're building these uh, fences around their life and they don't see it. I was there. When the money's coming in, you see the numbers, you're selling stuff, things are going well. You don't see it as a trap. You just see it as I'm coming up, I'm making money. When you get these accumulations of success and it goes on for a while, it becomes a habit. It becomes very hard to get away from. And you might need to get away from it, but because it's a habit and because you're trapped, you can't. That's why I live a very simple lifestyle. I don't really spend a lot of money on BS because a lot of that stuff is a trap. Uh, somebody was like, why'd you get rid of your house? Blah, 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 blah. It's just me. <laughs> I don't need all of that. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, as I was putting the Hustler Mindset Project, I have the Declaration of G. Uh, one of my rules in life is I don't have anything in my space that I don't really need. I have a few wants, but I don't like clutter. I don't like clutter of mind. I don't like clutter of space. If I don't need it or if I have something and I've lost that love and feeling, I'll sell it or give it away because that stuff traps you. I learned that in the storage auction business. It totally, totally traps you. You get in this situation where you can't let that stuff go, and it's just weighing you down. It's just really, really pulling you in, and you you have this situation that is irretractable, and you you just can't get out. I mean, it's irrevocable. You just can't get out, and I was there. And the only reason that I'm out the storage auction business is I got sick. And my partner got sick. That's pretty much it. I was forced out. And um, looking back, I'm kind of grateful. I know it seems a little strange, but I'm kind of, I'm, you know, it took a while because it hurt. When you're out there and you're buying stuff and you're getting this stuff and you're getting a new wardrobe and you, you, you just, it's just so interesting. It took me years to get over the thirst of the storage auction game. Eight years because it was just like... I would drive up Roswell Road or somewhere, and I see an auction going on. And it's just like, yeah, go, 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 go. And uh, another principle of the Declaration of G is only one thing can occupy one space at one time unless you get into quantum physics. And for me to go do that, I need to trade what I have now and what I have right now. So valuable, I, it's, it would be an unfair and an inequitable trade because freedom is priceless. It is truly, truly priceless. So now that I've calmed down and I've actually started, I know it sounds silly. I actually go to stores and buy stuff now. I didn't do that for a, a decade. I didn't buy anything in stores. and I got everything out of storage units. So I had to work on myself and realize the value of living this life versus that life. So understand, in this new disruptive economy, you as a one person or a two person shop or maybe a five person team can do incredible things. That is the power of this disruptive economy. And going back to what I was saying earlier about being disheartened, there are many people that don't see it. They clearly they don't see it. They're going to become digital roadkill. They don't see it. And the reason is, I believe that due to the education system, because uh, one of my friends posted my first grade picture on Facebook, you know, the first grade class picture. And I looked, there was only 24 kids in that class. Everybody knew everybody. It was manageable for teachers. Teachers are dealing with classes of 35, 40 kids or more. I truly feel because the information wasn't as robust because kids have to learn more now because there's you know new knowledge out there i felt that i went through a better system because that system one was smaller two it held you accountable and you were held accountable they didn't pass kids alone in my school system i know people that got left back i know people that got left back twice if you didn't get it hey you will be in the third grade next year you're going to stay there until you get it I think I think that's some point where they would just like pass them on, but I think it was four or five years. So 
the social stigma back then of getting left back was very harsh. All you had to do as a kid was go to school. But due to the fact that the education system now is giving false self-esteem, it's giving false knowledge that there are kids out there that think they're smart and they're really not. They don't have critical thinking skills. They can't read and comprehend well. You know, going back to the California Achievement Test, the CAT test, I blew that shit out the water on reading comprehension, uh, English. I just totally blew it out the water. And it's kind of coming full circle that something that I did very well as a kid is something that I do that has created this life of freedom. That is really, really interesting. But with the education system that is um, it's not preparing people for this disruptive world. I should say the mass education system because there are schools, there are universities that get it and they're preparing the kids, but that's not the normal deal. That's not widespread in my opinion based on what I see in the people I meet because if you can't see what's happening right now it's because you you're living a life of delusion what's happening right now in terms of the advancement of technology the in terms of this disruptive economy it has just really begun it's been going on for 30 years but it's about to catch fire so to speak it's about to accelerate you will see people that you know right now, five years from now, ten years from now, they have a good job, great career, uh, great education base, and five, ten years, these people are going to be doing what I'm doing, becoming self-employed, not so much out of desire, but out of necessity, because they're going to be rifted, reduction in force. Someone, some whiz kid or some whiz girl is going to create this new program, software, or something that's going to render what they do for that job obsolete. And it's going to happen quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. And you have a choice. You can be on the side of disruption or you can be on the side of getting disrupted. I'm a disruptor because, you know, like I said, the, the reason I'm doing this video, uh, the reason that I woke up this morning and I saw that and I just like, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I wasn't even planning on doing any videos for like five days. I was like, it's, it's just very important for you to realize that. These are the best of times. They truly are. I'm a one-person shop that kicked the ass of a huge network site. And at one <clears throat> and it was a battle. At one point, I was getting my ass kicked, you know, knocked on the chin. I, I got knocked down. And I pivoted. And I pivoted again, and I pivoted again, and I did the rope of dope. And then, you know, I went to the gym and chewed on some spinach and came back swinging even harder. And I looked, and they were on the mat. And the thing is, the beauty of being a disruptive person, one that's not afraid of change, is I've positioned myself where I can change this channel around. I've always talked about a multitude of topics to the dismay of some people i posi i never locked myself into storage auctions even when i was doing it hard i was craigslist there was you know there was i talked about a lot of stuff i never locked myself in because it, it i knew it was going to end i knew the storage auction thing was not going to be like that forever because the average person doesn't want to work that hard they just don't they don't want to work that hard so understand that if you are facing a existential crisis with your career and your life, take some time to get to know you and figure out what kind of life of design that you want. You know, my thing is the freedom. For someone else, that may be woefully inadequate. They may need the, the business and the employees and the warehouse. They may need that, and that's cool. Because everyone gets to choose what they want. And many people are unaware that they get to choose what they want. They feel that they're kind of locked in into a certain path when they're not. You get to choose. So choose wisely. 
All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.